Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining me for another day text. We'll get started in just a moment here. We're working our way through 1 Peter chapter 1. We do these day texts every weekday morning at 6 a.m. and Saturdays at 6 a.m. unless otherwise scheduled so that we can progressively and continuously work our way through the biblical books and records as well as other related texts and histories. So, as I mentioned, we're in the letter of 1 Peter. And we're going to be reading verses 17 through 21. Usually what I do with these day texts is I group together verses that are a part of the coming reading that fit a particular topic so that we can benefit by getting the most out of the verses that we consider without involving too many different topics. Good morning, everyone. We'll get started here in just a moment. So the idea with the day text is, as, as it was mentioned, is to keep us going through the ancient texts and records, primarily the biblical books and records, so that we can better our understanding of the God Jah, of the Messiah, whom we believe is Jesus, and how we can treat others the way we want to be treated, the golden rule. And so by going through these texts on a regular basis, they help remind us of the things we've learned or teach us new things um, that we may be hearing for the first time. But it also gives us an opportunity to interact with each other, answer questions, and um, fully consider the material. So we're going to be reading verses 17 through 21 of 1 Peter chapter 1. What I'll do is I'll read through the text. At times I'll stop maybe make an application and then keep reading. At other times, I'll read the whole thing and then we'll talk about it. It just depends on the text and um, the way that the reading flows. So let's get right to it. <clears throat> and we'll start with verse 17. There are several Hebrew scripture texts or Old Testament texts referenced um, that I'll be referring to, but not necessarily reading. Sometimes we'll quote and read related texts, and if so, I usually put those in the description with the day text. Okay, so let's read uh, verses 17 through 21, 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call upon the Father, the one judging without discrimination according to each person's activity, you must live with reverential fear during the time of your exile. Because you have learned you were not set free from your vain way of life, passed down through hereditary, heredity, by devaluing silver or gold. Verse 19. Rather, you were set free by praiseworthy blood, like a perfect lamb's blood, like one without any observable flaw, by Christ's blood. In one sense, verse 20, having been chosen beforehand, before human begetting in the world order, but in another sense revealed by the evidence of these last times through you, verse 21, those who by means of Jesus believe in God, the one who raised Jesus from the dead and who gave glory to him. So your faith and your hope in God remains. Okay, let's take a look. There's a lot going on here. But, you know, one of the things we as Christians appreciate the most is the fact that we don't discriminate people. We don't discriminate based on our race or ethnicity. We are all images of Jah. And so that's how we look at each other. That's how the Father looks at us. He doesn't discriminate because you have money or you have influence. He looks right at your heart and he knows exactly what's motivating you and me. And so he is the one who can judge. And that is why we should live in reverential fear of him. Sacred terror is another way of putting that. During the time of our exile. So he's referring to us as exiles in the world. Because like Abraham, who came to a place that was not his own, we are in a world that is not ours. It's been built up. 
into another system of things that does not follow Jah. So when the temporary structures that have been erected on the earth are removed, the world will be back to the way it was meant to be by Jah. And then he will decide what it is that we construct and what it is we do that is fit for his world. But the things that people are building today, the structures, the weapons, the centers of self-pleasure and blasphemy, all the things they do to glorify themselves and false gods, but not Jah, all of those things are going to be gone. So use them according to your need, but do not become attached to them. They're going to be gone. So do not look to devaluing silver or gold like verse 18 tells us. That did not set you free. That did not give you life. Your life did not come from silver or gold or any money. Yet people keep giving their life to it. Your life came from Jah or through your parents that he gave life to all the way back to Adam. We should be giving thanks and assisting those who gave us life from our parents to Jah. And if our parents are those who don't want to do the things that Jah made them to do, well, we show respect where we can and we move on, right? We focus on Jah. He's the source of life. Without him, there would be no life. So who else are we going to give our life to? People who didn't give life in the first place? It may have been our parents, but where'd their life come from, right? From their parents all the way back to Adam, as I said. So we owe our life to Jah. Everybody owes their life to Jah. And that's why we should live with reverential fear, sacred terror of Jah. All these criminals and people out there who do not praise Jah and they, they persecute us who do and they think we're crazy. They're in for the biggest surprise of their life. And it's really not a surprise because they know. Everybody knows. We all have the same knowledge of good and bad passed on from our first parents. Some of us just accept it and others reject it. But it's not hard to show where life came from. And it's therefore also not hard to show scientifically that life must be eternal. Because life is here now. And life can only come from pre-existing life. So there can be no break in the chain. Either way, people get to choose. So we accept that we were set free by Christ's blood. Though given life by Jah through our parents... We were given life again because we were born into a world of sin and death and released from that condition by our faith in Jesus and in the sacrifice that he gave. Instead of putting our faith in the laws of Moses and giving sacrifices according to those regulations so that we could have a temporary relationship with Jah, we have a permanent relationship with Jah as long as we follow Jesus and show faith in him. Jack, you might want to take note of verse 17. I'm, I'm sure you did already, but <laughs> once again, we see that the Father is judging according to each person's activity, the things that we do, not just our belief inside in our mind and heart and spirit. It has to be demonstrated. That's the basis for our judgment. Just like Jesus said in John 5. And um, now let's get down to verse 20 because here you have references to our choosing beforehand. And you know what I put in the text, Genesis 3.15, because Calvinists and others like to cite this text and others that, that they believe showed that we were this was all predetermined by God from eternity, which is not true. The Bible teaches very clearly that these things were foretold from the throwing down of seed upon the earth or before the throwing down of seed, whichever, depending on the text you read. And in this case, in verse 20, we were chosen beforehand through God's prophecy about the seed, which we know through Paul's writings is a composite seed that involves both Jesus and those chosen to be with him. And this was before human begetting, so before the throwing down of seed, of seed before Adam and Eve had children, this was foretold in Genesis 3.15. 
but it was revealed in the first century when Jesus came, fulfilled the law, and was resurrected by Jah, so that those who had faith in him could be manifest. And that's why he refers to them being revealed at that time. And then he goes on to conclude that those, those who by means of Jesus believe in God, see, their faith in God was restored through the coming of Jesus. Even though they were Jews like Peter, they had lost faith, but he restored it to them. He gave them hope in a corrupt age that was defiling his father's worship. He showed them the way. He is the way. And that is why we put our faith in him. He did everything right, everything according to the Mosaic law, everything according to Jah, even when he didn't want to because of the suffering and, and pain that he didn't deserve. So that's what we need to be prepared to do. We trust in Jah. He gave us life and he can give us life again. No one else can do that. No one else can can do the things that Jah does. And he does it without discrimination. He doesn't look at our skin, at our ethnicity, at our poverty, at our riches. He looks at our heart and he says, what are the thoughts in between thoughts that you're having? That's what Jah looks at. He's the one who knows exactly what you're thinking in between your thoughts so that his judgment is perfect, whereas ours can be flawed. We can look only superficially at people and make determinations based on their works, which is something we should do because by their fruit you will know them, right? <laughs> if you can't tell what fruit you're eating from the tree, then uh, we have a whole nother set of problems, right? Now, sometimes it becomes complicated and we don't want to judge anyone ultimately, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being able to determine what we should do based on the fruits that either we show or other people show. That we can do. That's what we're supposed to do. If we don't do that, well, we might not, we might not be aware of ourselves or, or the dangers that other people could present. So let's, let's keep our senses about us, show reverential fear to Jah, and always remember we were set free from sin and death by Jesus Christ, not by silver, not by gold, and not by anyone else. So let's keep these things in mind. Good day text for us. Always good material in the biblical writings. And that's why we do these texts because they help us. Uh, and of course, I speak from my own experience. It gets me ready for the day. I keep these thoughts with me and they come back every now and then. I remember the text and it helps me build my knowledge and understanding of the, of the scriptures. So I hope it does the same for you. I look forward to joining you again tomorrow. And I should have an update on this Sunday show. I am going to do, at this point, I'm going to do the, uh, the, the special audio um, presentation. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Surprise. <laughs> but uh, probably tomorrow or, or Friday, I'll, I'll reveal the title. But it's an audio file from a few years ago that I'm pretty sure you will enjoy. So we'll see. Uh, until then... I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will be doing different things today. I should have up some more videos that I'm working on. But as you know, I'm busy with work and life. And <laughs> I do the best I can, like I'm sure you all do. So let's just keep going forward. Let's keep reading these texts and praising John. In Jesus' name.